Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the General Society of Mechanics and Tradesmen. We especially welcome our colleagues from the Earthquake Engineering Research Institute and the Geotechnical e Extreme Events Reconnaissance. My name is Victoria Dangle. I'm the Executive Director of the General Society of Mechanics and Tradesmen. For those of you not familiar with the organization, we were founded in 1785 by the skilled craftsmen of the city. Our principal mission is our tuition-free programs that we run for people in the building and construction trades. We've been doing that since 1858. We also operate this library you're in. It's a membership library. You can join for as little as $35. That was founded in 1820. We also have 24 public programs, and this library houses uh, program activity for many other nonprofits and industry groups. And the society also owns this wonderful building that's on the National Register of Historic Places, and the uh, facade is a New York City landmark. And I would like to now call Guillermo Diaz Famas to the microphone. Thank you. Thanks, Victoria. Um, first of all, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. It is um, great to have such a great crowd. Uh, today, we're here with um, the Earthquake Engineering Research Institute, ERI, in particular with the New York Northeast chapter, which is our regional chapter, and the Geotech uh, Geotechnical Extreme Events Reconnaissance Association gear uh, for this very exciting event, the Meta Symposium on the 2010, 2011, 2016 New Zealand earthquakes, based on their relevance to New York City and the U.S. critical infrastructure. Uh, first of all, we would like to thank our outreach partners, uh, the Applied Technical Technology Council, the Deep Foundations Institute, the Geo Institute of ASCE, the Institution of Civil Engineers, the Multidisciplinary Center for Earthquake Engineering Research, the National Science Foundation, the New York City Emer Emergency Management, the Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center, Quay Corps, the Structural Engineers Association of New York, the United States Geological Survey, and of course, our venue, the General Society of Mechanics and Tradesmen of the City of New York. We would also like to thank our generous donations uh, from our platinum sponsor, WSP Parsons Brinkerhoff, our gold sponsors, uh, Gillison's Murray and Stefasek, Exponent and the Structural Engineers Association of New York, the Geotechnical Institute, June Ma, SOM, IC, MRC, and Simpson Gumpers and Heger as our bronze and silver sponsors. So I would like to invite, uh, following me, uh, Professor Mary Comerio, the president of ERI, Followed by her, we're going to have a Professor Jonathan Bray, who is the steering committee chair of the GEAR Association. And after that, that I would like to invite uh, Dr. Cici Nicolau, the president of the local New York Northeast chapter, board of directors of ERI, and member of the advisory panel of GEAR. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I have to lower this. I'm not so tall. Uh, as president of EERI, I want to thank you, um, all of the sponsors, the New York chapter, the Mechanics um, Association. This is a wonderful venue and a great opportunity for us to be part of this. I want to just take a couple of minutes to tell you a little bit about EERI, but I have to put my glasses on to do that. Um, EERI is, um, is a membership organization. We have about 3,000 members. About 20% of those are international. Um, many of the rest are within the United States. It is an organization that is not just serving its membership, though, like many of our professional societies. It also has a vision for a world in which earthquake losses are understood and steps have been taken to address the risks. We see ourselves as a leader in earthquake 
engineering investigations and dissemination of information. Um, one of the really important things about EERI is that it's a multidisciplinary organization, of course. Engineers are the dominant group, but we have architects and planners, we have social scientists, we have political scientists, we have public policy people, we have emergency management, so we are very proud of our interdisciplinary focus. Um, and we both have a commitment to the different kinds of communities, we promote research, and importantly, we want to speak with a common voice to, um, to, um, to talk about risk management. Um, we have many kinds of different kinds of publications. I won't go into them all, but you can look on our website. Um, there, there's a lot of benefits to membership, access to all of these publications, access to Earthquake Spectra. Um, and so it's eeri.org, very easy to find. Um, so take a look at that. And one of our keystone programs is the Learning from Earthquakes program. Um, it's really been part of the founding of EERI since the beginning uh, when members really recognized the importance of rapid reconnaissance after earthquakes. And in 1973, the Learning from Earthquakes program was initiated. We had funding from the National Science Foundation for that for, um, for more than 40 years. Um, we no longer have that funding, but you know, it's the new world and we're adapting and um, we're still doing it. I think the great thing it has in, in this modern era is that we have partnerships with GEAR and with other groups. We are working with Quake Corps in New Zealand. Um, there was a great response to the recent Kaikoura earthquake that was um, very um, was put on by a number of organizations, both within New, New Zealand and, and GEAR and others. And EERI hosted the clearinghouse and was able to be part of that process in supporting that mission, even though we didn't send an enormous team down there for the earthquake. And I think that model is opening up many new avenues of sharing, and it's building all kinds of cooperation with um, sister organizations. So we're very proud of that and it still is one of the cornerstones of our our organization. We also have lots of benefits for younger members. There are we, we just did an actually a learning from earthquake study tour in Chile after the World Conference, which was a huge success. Um, we took 15 young professionals and some PhD students and and sort of revisited the sites of earthquake damage. Uh, with our Chilean counterparts, we looked at the recovery, we looked at rebuilding, looked at the resilience issues. So that's just one example of the many kinds of programs that we have for our young professionals and our student chapters. This is a snapshot of the board of directors, um, David Friedman, uh, former president of uh, Pharrell Elsesser, um, will be taking over as president following me, and then this is the rest of the board. Sissy Nicolau, your intrepid leader here in New York who is so active, is, is on our board and has been um, an amazing contributor to the board. So let me thank you um, very much, and I think I turn this, who do I turn this over to? There's the New York chapter to John, no, there's a slide on the New York, uh, oh, sorry, I'm supposed to present this. I thought somebody, <laughs> I thought somebody else was gonna talk about the chapter. Um, the New York Northeast chapter has been fantastic in bringing people to, get, bringing your community together, I don't have to tell you that, um, but we have watched and, and been hugely impressed from California. Um, the, the level of energy and activity and engagement that this chapter has, has engendered and we're just thrilled to see this and um, hope that maybe one of these days we can even have a meeting here in New York, um, a national meeting, that would be fun. I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and so these are your um, New York chapter um, uh, officers, uh, presidents and, uh, and, um, and other officers. And then here is your uh, younger members committee. And um, so there's, there, the chapter is very active. Please contact these folks if, um, if you wanna know more about it. If you're not already a member of the chapter and of EERI, we're happy to talk to you about how to do that. Thank you very much.
direction. Oh, there we go. I'm Jonathan Bray, UC Berkeley, and I'm talking on behalf of GEAR. And first, I'd like to uh, thank you for inviting us here. And Dr. Sissy Neckla, who I've worked with, is really a leader in terms of the vision. I'd have to say, in terms of cities that I've traveled to most that have not had an earthquake, it's been New York City. And so I think you recognize the importance of earthquakes and other hazards, otherwise you wouldn't be in this room. And so I applaud you for coming and participating, because unfortunately, you may have an earthquake someday and you need to be prepared for it. GEAR is an organization that our tagline is turning disaster into knowledge. It's a terrible thing for a natural disaster or an earthquake to uh, occur. It would be more terrible if we didn't learn from it. And GEAR starts off with its membership. We have over 400 members and they're all volunteers. And GEAR is only successful because of its grassroots organization. People like Sissy that drop everything, engage a bunch of younger engineers and senior engineers, and, and run and look at the events that have occurred during Hurricane Sandy and how they've impacted geotechnical systems. Go to Ecuador, go to Greece. And, and I think that's the important thing is the membership, the volunteers. Uh, we have a steering committee, which we think will broadly represents the group, but we don't have all the ideas, and so that's why we have an advisory panel that even is a broader group that provides advice to us. And of course, we have a graduate student. Anyone in, in the university life knows that everything happens at a university because of a graduate student. The GEAR objectives are really to collect this perishable data and to identify research. So it's, it's not just collecting that data, but collecting data with a purpose, is how can we inform researchers collect data that can then be used in future research to make advances in the profession. And over the years, uh, there's unfortunately been enough disasters to where we've gone to probably about 50 events. And in fact, you can go to the GEAR website, just uh, um, look up GEAR or www.gear, and you'll see that we have a map that shows some of the events that we've gone to, and it's just made possible by the National Science Foundation. The GEAR operations are actually, because it's such a passion for the geotechnical engineers and the engineering geologists and seismologists and the structural engineers and others, uh, planners, emergency response people like Laurie Johnson, to, to do this, we just pay travel expenses. And people volunteer and realize they're passionate about this. And so our core budget is actually $90,000 a year. And some of our events, such as the Haiti earthquake and the New Zealand earthquake and the Hurricane Sandy, the cost to the US taxpayer is minimal. And the benefits are just tremendous. Quickly going over three events, the Haiti earthquake was actually led by Ellen Rathje, who's in the audience. And in fact, one of the turnouts, we always like to think far reaching, but one of her maps was actually used by the, uh, the World Bank to help that country respond to that event because we provided that information uh, and worked with them hand in hand. The New Zealand earthquake, which wouldn't have been possible without our New Zealand researcher and colleagues, Brendan Bradley was an active investigator as well as Mishko Chubanowski, led to that gear report and in fact, Tom O'Rourke and the working with the uh, Lifelines people really helped them respond to that event and put things in action that then allowed them to withstand the later sequence of earthquakes and be able to perform properly. And then Sissy and others worked, many people, some of you in the audience worked on the response to Hurricane Sandy and how it impacted geotechnical systems. And that report looked at coastal protection and looked at things that we not, might need to do in terms of mitigation. So there's tremendous opportunities to learn from these events, and this is the opportunity to do that in terms of the GEAR Association and its people. So thank you for coming here today. Thank you, John. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am Sissi Nicola, I'm the, uh, the president of the New York Northeast chapter. Uh, it is a great honor and privilege for our city to be able to be in a room with all these 
uh, world-renowned experts and um, uh, who anywhere who is even remotely uh, connected to earthquake engineering knows who these people are and they have devoted their professional life in uh, advancing the earthquake engineering pro profession and protecting communities. Um, so I'll be the first one to get autographs at the end of the <laughs> of this on the back of the booklet. So with a quick note on our event and uh, what is it, it, it was inspired by is our need for this uh, overused word of resilience uh, for our infrastructure systems. Um, 2016 has been the worst uh, year in economic losses from natural disasters. Uh, the Swiss uh, reinsurance has estimated the 2016 economic losses to have reached $160 billion. Um, that is about um, 50 of those billion dollars go to, to the people uh, because they're not predicted. And um, uh, the increase of this number is more than 50% from year 2015. So things are not getting any better in terms of what nature imposes on us, and we have no control over that, but we have control of how we design our structures and our communities to react better to things that we cannot predict, and often they come without any warning. Um, in engineering, there is an urgent need for us to provide quick and accurate solutions uh, to improve the performance of infrastructure that is often very aged, as it is here in New York, and um, also to assess, the, to assess and minimize the risk imposed by additional hazards. Uh, the rapid ex expansion of urban centers and our population has increased the demand on infrastructure uh, tremendously. So um, there is a balancing act uh, and we are uh, trying to um, come up with solutions. Unfortunately, solutions cannot be isolated. We have to look at the big picture of resilience, the big picture of how a city like New York works, and that requires cross-disciplinary uh, collaboration between planners, architects, uh, engineers, but also the, the, the public and, and the people, because these are the ones that are affected. Uh, so um, the, the two organizations uh, that um, collaborated uh, in this event um, are heavily involved in Christchurch. And Christchurch is very unique to all earthquake engineers uh, because it has suffered so much from repetitive earthquakes. And um, uh, that was the, the inspiration is to bring um, the experts that you will hear that have worked very hard uh, on, on these events to understand them and to study them and, and bring the lessons they have learned in New York and see what worked, what didn't work, and how we can learn from that and uh, work towards a more resilient New York City. Um, while we were organizing this, um, uh, which took a very long time, we were fortunate to have an earthquake in New Zealand. <laughs> This is not a good thing, but um, oh, the, the good thing about it is that uh, GEAR and ERI were there, and uh, it was not in Christchurch, but uh, it was in Kaikura, uh, further away, but still we have lessons of what worked and didn't work. Uh, so. Um, uh, the way the uh, event is going to be structured, the, the first part will be uh, the uh, talks by the four experts in the New Zealand uh, earthquakes, which will present their own part of what they studied in these events. We're going to have a break and then we're going to have a panel discussion with um, experts in implementation of codes and, uh, and regulations, and we, we are going to connect New Zealand to, to New York City uh, with hopefully your participation participation as well. I know we have many agencies here, so that's a very good thing to, to have a very good dialogue. Uh, so again, I want to thank everybody that has contributed, our volunteers, and everybody who has supported um, the event. Um, so uh, in order to save time, I'm going to, there they are. <laughs> They're all in, in the room. And they have worked very, very hard until last minute to, uh, to get this uh, 
event going. Um, so I, what I, I will say a few words for each of our speakers and uh, they will start speaking and each one will pass the, um, the microphone to the next so uh, we, we don't spend a lot of time. Uh, so first of all, Professor Brendan Bradley, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Uh, he's our uh, out-of-towner or out-of-USA, he's from New Zealand, of course, and um, he's a professor of uh, earthquake engineering in the Department of um, Civil and Natural Resources Engineering at the University of Canterbury in New Zealand, and he's also the Deputy Director of QuakeCor, the New Zealand Centre for Earthquake Resilience, and he's going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, he's in the editorial um, uh, board of Earthquake Spectra, the Journal of ERI, and the, uh, and the Bulletin of the New Zealand Society of Earthquake Engineering. Uh, his uh, main uh, focus areas are on engineering seismology, strong ground motion prediction, seismic response analysis of uh, structural and geotechnical systems, and seismic performance and loss estimation methods. He has received, uh, despite his very young age, uh, many, many awards uh, with uh, his work with a great var variety of collaborators, including the 2014 Shamsher Prakash Foundation Research Award, the 2014 New Zealand Engineering Excellence Awards, Young Engineer of the Year, and the 2015 ERI uh, Shah Innovation Prize, and the 2016 ASC Normal Medal. So it's, um, um, we are very much looking forward to hearing from Brandon, who will be followed by Professor Ellen Rathche, uh, who is um, a Warren Bellows Centennial Professor in the University of um, Texas at Austin, the Department of Civil Engineering, and also a Senior Research Scientist at the Bureau of Economic uh, Geology. Thank you, Mary. Um, she's experienced in the areas of uh, site response analysis, slope stability, and of course field reconnaissance after earthquakes, and uh, remote sensing of geotechnical phenomena. Uh, she is a founding member and currently a co-chair of GEAR Association, and she's a member, she was a member of the Board of Directors of ERI. Uh, she is also uh, has received many awards, including the Huber Research Prize from ASCE, uh, the Hogan Dogler Award for Outstanding Paper from ASTM, uh, the Samsher Prakash Research Award in 2007, the Shy Innovation Prize from ERI in 2006. Uh, Ellen is a principal investigation of Design Safe, a resource sharing platform for natural hazards engineering that I invite all of you to take a look at. Uh, Ellen has been involved in research after the uh, Cranberry earthquake sequence and she uh, has used advanced technology, satellite imaginary, Im imagery to uh, measure the movements associated with liquefaction and lateral spreads. Uh, most recently, she was in Kaikoura with GEAR and participated in, in that mission and she will show us um, findings and technologies that were used uh, in this uh, reconnaissance. And the other two speakers um, are, um, I don't know if I need to say much about them, you all know them. Uh, Professor Bray is a faculty chair in earthquake engineering um, excellence at the University of California at Berkeley. And, and um, I know. <laughs> Also, things happen when you leave Berkeley, both, both of you. <laughs> um, uh, John is a member of the National Academy of Engineering and a fellow of ASE. He's currently, as you heard, the, the chair uh, of GEAR. Uh, he has more than 340 publications, and um, of course his expertise includes seismic performance of earth structures, site response, liquefaction and ground failure, and effects on structures um, uh, due to fault rupture propagation and reconnaissance. Um, among his honors are the Peck Award, the Joyner Award, the Prakash Award, the Huber Research Prize, uh, Parker Foundation Fellowship and from NSF Presidential Young Investigator Award that he got a couple of years ago. <laughs> um, 
Uh, John has been living partially in New Zealand, I think, since uh, the earthquake started, and he has been a key advisor uh, to the government following the earthquakes. He is extensively involved in providing input and reviewing local regulations with respect to liquefaction and its effects on buildings and lifelines at Christchurch. He has also helped tremendously in um, developing uh, the specific criteria for New York City and specific soil conditions with respect to site response in our city for which we are very grateful. And um, the last in the series of four experts is Professor uh, Thomas O'Rourke, who is the Thomas Bing Professor of Engineering. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, in the Civil Engineering Department at Cornell University. Uh, he is also a member of the National Academy of Engineering, International Fellow of the Royal Acad Academy of Engineering, and distinguished member of ASCE. He has been a past president of ERI, and, um, and also a member of the US NSF Engineering Advisory Committee. Uh, his research in, in includes a great range of geotechnical uh, problems, including earthquake engineering, underground construction technologies, engineering for large geographically distributed systems, and GIS and other uh, information technologies and database management. He is going to talk a lot about how these were used um, in a very efficient way in New Zealand. He has received a number of distinctions for his research and teaching, some of which are the ASTM Hogan Dogler Award, the ASCE Collingwood Prize, Huber Research, uh, Martin Duke, St St Stephen Bechtel Pipeline Engineering, and the Ralph Peck Award. Uh, he has um, also been awarded the ERI George Hausner uh, Medal, and in 2009 he gave the Rankin Lecture, and in 2016 he gave the Terzaki Lecture. Uh, during Hurricane Sandy in New York City, uh, Tom was a member of our GEAR mission and a key component to our team uh, that produced a report that was released uh, shortly after the event and was used extensively by our authorities uh, during the recovery. Uh, he is also very involved in the New Zealand earthquakes, and he has also been a frequent um, uh, traveler there, helping in the recovery of Christchurch, providing review of uh, rebuild of plants of roads, and mostly on water delivery and wastewater uh, systems. He has been a key contributor to SKIRT, which is the strongest Christchurch infrastructure rebuild team for restoring this system in Christchurch and to Little Newport. Uh, he chaired the international peer reviews of the guidance for repairing and rebuilding houses affected by the Canterbury earthquakes, the EQC shallow ground improvement field trials, and increased liquefaction vulnerability assessment methodology for the New Zealand High Court. So um, each one of our speakers are going to speak of these different uh, aspects of the New Zealand earthquakes. And with that, I will change the slide and invite uh, Brenton to give the first uh, talk.